We're now only 75 days from Copenhagen. There, under the auspices of the United Nations, we must agree to set the world on a low-carbon path. Almost every week, new scientific evidence is published showing the disastrous effects on human life of an increase in global temperature of more than two degrees. And many of you gathered here today will have seen firsthand the devastating effects of global warming on some of the poorest people in the world. So we cannot, in all conscience, plan for a future rise of more than two degrees. But we know that to have even a 50% chance of keeping temperatures at this level, we will need to stabilise greenhouse gas emissions at around 450 parts per million. This in turn means global emissions must peak no later than 2020, and to be cut to at least half of 1990 levels by 2050. So this must be our Copenhagen goal. But we will not achieve it unless the deal we make is fair. Recognising the right of poor countries to develop and to lift their people out of poverty, and to leave room for developing countries to grow, developed countries have committed to reducing their own emissions by at least 80% by 2050. The next stage is to agree a climate finance partnership that will help developing countries both adapt to climate change and to shift to low carbon growth themselves. That's why I set out in June my proposals for a climate finance agreement. It encompasses both public and private funding sources and with new and more equitable governance arrangements. I suggested a working figure of $100 billion a year by 2020 and I've been gratified by the response that this proposal has received. It strengthened my belief we can and must now move to an active negotiation on how developed countries can raise such sums, on what concrete mitigation actions the larger developing countries will take, and on how we can make funds available for the urgent and the long-term adaptation needs of the poorest and the most vulnerable countries. So I hope that in our discussions here we can make real progress. I'd like to thank Secretary-General Ban Ki-moon for organising this important event. As global leaders, we have an immense responsibility to the people that we represent today and to the generations that will follow. But we also have a unique opportunity to avoid the human environmental catastrophe of unchecked climate change by securing in Copenhagen an agreement that is ambitious, effective and fair. The world's people will not forgive us if we fail, so with common will, with imagination and with a willingness to compromise, let us now commit ourselves to success.